Hi everybody! Guess what day it is today? It is March 14th, 3, 1, 4, officially Pi Day! Happy Pi Day everybody! And thank you so much for being here and for joining us. Um, so my name is Olivia Bragal and I am a STEM Starter Academy um, ambassador um, here at SUCC and I'm here to talk about and explain a little bit more about Pi! Pi is the mathematical constant representing the ratio of the circumference of any circle to the diameter of that same circle. Well, pi is actually an irrational number, so it goes on, it goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on forever, just like the universe. For six billion digits, as far as we know, it goes on for more, actually, but we know the six billion digits. I will not be reciting them. Not today. Not today. We can use pi to determine the circumference of many circular items that we can find in our day-to-day -day life, such as this here pickle jar. Still doesn't change the fact that I can open it. Or this here lucky coin. It's shiny. This here magic crystal ball. Now if only we could predict the future with this. <laughs> I guess we can't. Oh well. We can even use the formula 4 pi r squared to figure out the volume of any spherical object. Such as, you know, the moon. Might as well go big, right? I've got my passport right here. Who's coming with me? Somebody call NASA. I will now hand it over to Lucas, who will explain a little bit more about Pi and the ways that the STEM Started Academy here at SDCC uses Pi in their different events. Hi everyone, happy Pi Day. My name is Lucas and I'm from the STEM Star Academy here at Springfield Technical Community College. And I just want to give you all a little brief information about Pi and a little bit about how we use it in our uh, program. So a little bit about Pi, of course, the history of it. Um, it's been, it's such an important number. Everyone knows it, you know, it's it's 3.14, you know. It's such an important number because how we interact with the world is all these basic, basic shapes, you know, circles, triangles, trig, all this basic geometry is really what we use to kind of understand the physical world around us. And it's played an integral part of our, uh, of our, our, our de development because math and science is how we develop as a society. And Pi has just been so such a cornerstone of that. Now, um, a little bit more about Pi. Uh, it, it, it representation of Pi goes back to almost all the way to the ancient Egyptians because they were all looking for that that relationship between the circumference and diameter of circles. And now the Greeks started to do work on it, you know, ancient Greeks, and it's just continually built all the way through history. Um, eventually, we finally got to the number that we got today, which is three point one four one five nine. And then some bunch of other number, bunch of other digits, because it's an irrational number and it goes on infinitely. Um, the calculations of it, the reason why we can get so many digits of it now is through the uh, the development of cal of calculus. We've been able to use infinite series and methods like that, and now advanced computers just calculate pi to a ridiculous amount of digits that you never really need, but just interesting to do so. So as we as we said, pi is just a, such an interesting number because it is the ratio of the circumference of a circle to its diameter which is very applicable because we really, that's like I said, it's how we interact with our world. You know, as scientists, as math mathematicians, we, we deal with real world shapes. We deal with circles, we deal with spheres, we deal with cylinders, we deal with triangles and triangles and trig properties. And that's really all because we have pi and we really have this, this important irrational number that just works with all these basic shapes that are gonna just be so important for us as we continue to advance. Um, as far as us in the program, you know, we, we use it in all of our STEM classes. I'm, I'm, you'd be hard pressed to find a textbook, any math textbook in any of our college classes that doesn't at least mention pi once. You know, it's just that important. It's used in geometry, it's used in trig, it's used in almost every part of math because it's that important. And physics, oh my gosh, it's used in almost all of physics. You know, physics is always using pi. So much so that in, in mathematics, sometimes we don't just um, denote things by a typical uh, uh, axis system like X and Y. We sometimes will even go into um, what's called cylindrical and spherical coordinates, in which case, instead of being X, Y, or Z directions, now we're looking at graphs in terms of R, the radius direction, and the theta, and the theta, which is the angle. And when we do that, of course, we're using angles, and we're using uh, circles, we're using pi. So pi just comes up in all branches of STEM, and it's just such an important number um, and such an important relationship that we have to make with it because it's so useful in all of our of all of our fields. Um, as far as our program, we've used it when uh, when coding 
and uh, programming robots. It's like a robotic day. Um, so the circle, so the robots can move in different circles. And here's a little clip um, of some of the robots moving around. You can see it, that they can spin. And the reason why they can spin is because we program them to be able to spin around their own um, their own circumference. And of course, we do that using pi and using the diameter and using just simple math relationships to be able to program stuff like this. And it's just incredible that one one little, I guess you could say number, a rational number, is so important in so many fields. And I'll tell you now, as, as, a, as an engineer, you know, I was work, working as a um, engineering student going towards my undergrad de degree. Um, every class we have, like I said, uses pi. Um, all your advanced engineering, all physics classes, because it's just that important. Circles, cylinders, and spheres, they don't go away. You know, we still need them. Trig, trig's always there because it's how we interact with our physical world. And here you can see these, these robots that were programmed they had to know what a circle is. You know, so you have to program these circles and, and these, these, excuse me, these robots and teach them what a circle is. So we use Pi to do that. And it's just such an incredible opportunity for students to learn. Um, there's a great opportunity for students to continue to understand what Pi is and what it represents. From our drone day, um, we try to do this thing where we fly a drone over and we get a picture of all the students. This was, of course, pre-COVID when, when we could all be out there. We were all outside. Um, we try to get the students to stand in a circle and spell out STCC STEM. And here you can see a uh, well-drawn circle. And obviously if you if you only had the diameter, right? If you only knew how long a diameter you could be, you, you have, you could easily get the circumference using pi. You know, pi times diameter is the circumference. You could get the circumference of that circle. So there's these two little examples. You can see that no matter what you're doing, pi is gonna come up because it's just that important of a relationship. It's such an important number and it's such an important day. And now Emerson will take it away and she'll show us how Pi can relate to drones. Hello, I'm Emerson Alexander and I work as a STEM mentor slash tutor slash ambassador for the STEM Starter Academy at STIC. And today I'll be talking to you about how we use Pi in some of our events. I've put together a mini presentation. So the event I'll be talking to you guys about today is the STEM Starter Academy Drone Activity. So in the fall of 2018, students participated in a drone lecture slash demonstration, and you can see Professor Rima Rande here and Olivia right there who spoke earlier, so that's pretty fun. And the goal was to take an aerial photograph of the students filling stick STEM. They used Pi to determine the layout of the letters in the circle. And you can see, this is the circle of the um, soccer field at stick. And it's a beautiful fall day. And you can kind of see the layout of the leaves that spell the letters. And this is a, I am, um, top view picture of a soccer field in case you didn't know. Fun fact, I used to play soccer at stick, so I'm very familiar with the field and it was a lot of fun. So in order to find the circumference using pi to figure out, you know, where the students would stand along the line, you would use circumference equals two pi times the radius. So the radius of a typical soccer field circle is 30 feet. So that would be 2 times pi times 30 feet, so leaving you with a circumference of 188.5 feet. And next, they needed to find the area of the circle to know how much space they had for each of the letters. They broke the letters into pairs, as you can see here, and they needed to find out the area of each of the quadrants. So to find the area of a circle, it will be pi times the radius squared. The radius, as we know, is 30 feet. So when you square that, you get 900 feet squared. And that times pi equals 2,827.4 feet squared. Now that's the area of the total circle, but to find it for just one of these parts, you'll divide that by four and you'll get the area of 706.9 feet squared for just one quadrant. And here's the results of that. It's not exactly perfect, but I think they did a really good job. 
and that is all I have for you today. And here is a quick message from our director, um, Professor Rina Runder. Um, so here we go. Happy Pi Day. So March 14th is also the birthday of Albert Einstein. I am Rina Rander. I manage the STEM Starter Academy at STIC. So the objectives of the academy is to improve student numbers in uh, STEM majors. So it's an initiative of the Department of Higher Education. At the academy, we give incoming students uh, their first math class and an English class for free, uh, tuition free, and we support them for the, during the time they are persevering a STEM major at Springfield Technical Community College. So some of the uh, programs we offer the students are the research methods class, citizen science program, a series of workshops uh, in robotics, coding, uh, also to have them persevere in a STEM major, we offer free tutoring and advising for them. One of the field trips that we went to was uh, UMass Green Building. And uh, we saw this mechanical device called Heliodon that's widely used in architecture for demonstrating the sun's motion relative to the building. So by placing the building or the model in the flat surface and by adjusting the light angle, the scientists can see how the building will look like at different days and different times of the day in a year. And uh, here's Dr. Carl Fiocchi from University of Massachusetts explaining this device. Uh, in June, on summer solstice, this is the track that the sun is taking over the sky. And if you read this, this is the time of the day, all right? So mm -hmm. we saw that it was rising. There's no daylight savings here, of course, guys. So here's the, here's the sun rising in the morning. If this was our building in here, so this is just a model to illustrate that. You can put a model of something you really did. You can see that, I can't see the time, but I'm figuring it's like, eight o'clock, nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, somewhere around here I might get noon, okay? But if it was winter time, now the sun has got a much lower hmm. position in the sky. <laughs> So application of pie is all around us.